Aww. Do we need some love today? Do we need some love? Yeah. Ah, oh, that's on my tongue. In the last video, I built the dolly that goes underneath the shipping container. And in this video, I'm going to quickly build the hitch that goes on the back of my truck and then the hitch that goes on the front of the shipping container. And in the next video, we'll go get the shipping container and bring it home. I'm just going to hit the highlights of the hitch build for the back of my truck because that's probably not very useful for most people. That's something that's very specific to my truck. To make this hitch for the back of my truck, all I did was cut out some half inch plate to bolt into the frame and underneath my bed and then slide some 3x5 3 8 walled rectangular tubing through it. Then I cut out a piece of one inch plate on the plasma table, drilled a hole in it, and welded it up on top, and that's what holds the gooseneck ball on. Alright, so that's the whole hitch. When that cools down, I'll put the ball on it. Um, kind of show you maybe a couple angles of it here, I guess, real quick. Oh yeah, I put the glove over the light so I didn't get spatter all over my work light there. So, pretty happy with it, all in all. Came out pretty nice. I hesitate to use the term gooseneck hitch for this, but I am building this according to what a standard gooseneck hitch ball should be at. And I'm using gooseneck hitch stuff. So, it is, even though the hitch that goes on the container isn't going up and over like an actual gooseneck, it's going to be a straight hitch. But this is all built according to gooseneck hitch standards. So that's why I use that term. Once the truck side of the hitch was done, then I moved on to drawing the hitch for the shipping container. My idea for this hitch was to have it simply pin in to the castings in the corner. I thought it'd be real easy if I could just slide the hitch onto the front of this container, slide two pins in, and lift the thing up and sit on the back of the truck. So that was a big influence in my design. However, the bigger influence to my design was what materials I had on hand, and that was some 4x6 rectangular tubing. Years ago, I cut apart an old plow that a neighbor didn't want anymore, and I had this nice long chunk of 4x6 tubing laying here, and I thought this is a perfect use for it. I also had this 4x6 piece of tubing laying here. It's been kicking around my shop for years. It's left over from another project I did. And I decided to use it as the piece that goes forward. I'll say the tongue of the hitch. I would like it to be about six inches longer in order to get a real nice turning radius, but I think it'll be all right. So I'm just gonna go with it. I'd also like for you to notice the way in which I weld this hitch together. Um, if you notice the two side pieces are welded onto the side of the tongue. This is actually the correct way to weld this together. If you just go and weld the tongue onto the side of the tubing that goes clear across, I would lose a lot of strength and also would create a lot of warp in that back piece. If you look at receiver hitches, this is the way they are built. It's a lot stronger to do it this way and it also reduces warpage. Next, I'm going to make the mounts to attach the coupler to this tubing. It's going to be a piece of flat bar with three holes in it. So I'm going to have the coupler down here or the coupler up here. Just need two positions. Hopefully that'll be enough. So I've got the band saw set up. We'll start cutting the flat bar and then just drilling the holes in them. I'm going to quickly bevel the ends here. I 
just going to put a little spacer here. Just kind of get myself set up so I can tack weld everything together. And I'll remove this coupler and that actually welds up solid. Maybe. I don't know why, but I feel like I just did this before and having a moment of deja vu. I'm just going to get this tacked up in here and then I'll take the coupler back out and weld her solid. First thing I'm going to do is draw these plates with the scribe attachment. The main reason I want to do that is because there's going to be two inch holes in them and I want to go ahead and just use an annular cutter on the mill to make those two inch holes. I want a good machine finish on those instead of the tapered plasma edge because these pins need to go through that hole. So if I scribe it I know where to drill those holes in the mill when I switch things over. I'm scribing the hole an X across so I can locate the center of the hole. And I'm going to go ahead and scribe the whole outside profile of the plate because if something happens to shift while it's cutting out or I reset something, I'll know immediately that it's gone wrong. All right, so switching over to the scribe, we'll draw these out, then we'll switch back to the plasma nozzle and cut them out. Now I'll swap that back out to the plasma consumables and start cutting. Alright, I got this piece clamped up here in the mill. Maybe you can see the cross hatches. Not really, can you, at that angle. Well, anyway, right there is my center punch mark, and that's the scribe marks. We're lined up. We're gonna do some machining. Next, I'm going to build the housing for the shore lock pins, and I'm just using some shaft for this. Yeah, my bandsaw blade gave out on me. The first one I cut off cut out amazing. It's nearly perfectly square. Really nice finish. The second one, boy, it took off 
in all kinds of directions. I had to turn the shaft a few times to get it to cut all the way through because it was really just going crooked. So I hope I left myself enough length to get her faced true. Yep. I wish I had an annular bit that could just go through that because it'd be kind of nice to keep that slug out of the middle of that, but my annular bit is two inch depth of cut and these are two and a half inches long, so it won't quite work. So I'll have to do it the old fashioned way and make lots and lots of chips out of it. Why am I using shaft instead of drawn over mandel tubing? Well, two reasons. First and foremost, this shaft is laying here, so I have it on hand. And second, Dom is really expensive. Like, really, really expensive. And I still have to machine the Dom, you know, bore it out on the inside in order for it to be the right tolerance because that stuff is made undersized and it needs to be finished. So if I'm gonna go to all the work to machine the inside, Honestly, it's just about as easy to start with shaft as it is super expensive dom. Gonna start out with a 7 8 bit here, and I don't believe in using a tiny pilot bit and working my way up. If your bit is sharpened right, it's just gonna drill and cut it out, no pressure. I'm just going to keep on doing that until I get it out to two inches. About 1997 there. Got this scrap piece of two inch stuff here. I'm going to see if it fits. Not quite, so. so I'll just take another quick little skim cut and we'll be perfect. And now we're going to try the dirty pin. This is the actual pin I'm going to use. I just haven't stuck it in here because it's got some rough spots on it and it's greasy and I just ugh, didn't want to ruin my machine fit, so I'll try it. Oh yeah, that's good. Just a little bit of slop on it too. Perfect. All right, I'm gonna chamfer these edges. And we'll pull this thing out of here. Yeah, the bolt's a little long. Uh, three inches too short and four inches excessive here. But I don't have three and a half in stock for some reason. Uh, but this actually works because that puts the uh, shoulder of the bolt across the pin instead of having threads in there. So I actually like that better anyway. Perfect. Little burr on the pin there, but otherwise, 
Perfect. Yep. Nice. Okay, now the whole purpose of this little thingy here, this tab, is I'm actually going to bend it out just a little bit. So when this hitch slides onto the container, oops, like it's the container here, and it slides on, it'll have this little bent over tab to kind of bonk onto the corner and slide it over, okay? So I've got it drawn on there which side I need bent because these things are mirror images of each other. So I'm gonna step over here to the press and bend them. I got the end plate, whatever you want to call that thing, set up over there. When I was setting that there, I realized that I did this wrong. I don't know why I did it this way. Was not thinking. Um, I should have cut a rectangle in this plate and stuck the tube through the plate. Uh, I did that on the truck hitch. So I should have done it on this too. It would have been much easier to get everything aligned in the correct place and it would have been stronger. Because uh, now I'm really relying on just the weld to hold everything. You know, when you actually put this tubing through the plate, it's locked in there good. But yeah, I don't know why I did it this way. Just did not occur to me until I set it on here just now and I'm like, ah, complete oversight. Not happy with that. Um, so yeah, I got it kind of all fiddle fouled around there and we'll double check it with the fireball square. And the other side is basically the same thing, only different. Next, I'm going to weld these uprights on. Alright, get this other side spot welded on and then we'll cut out the square tubing and figure out that front eye lift thingy. Okay, I drew myself a plate to go up here in the front of this hitch for lifting the hitch. Oh, well, I'm going to cut it out. I'm going to cut it out of this piece that I goofed up for the truck hitch. set up to cut the ends off the square tubing. Hopefully I cut them in the right direction. <laughs> uh, there we
Okay, I've got this welded on. And to get around that weld here, I had to grind that off a little bit on the square tubing, grind that corner off so it fits over this weld. And I had to do the same thing back here for this weld so it will fit whoop, right in there. And it'll be around that weld. I am going to figure out where my center of balance is for lifting this and weld my lifting eye on at that point. So, uh, move this magnet back and forth. I want the hitch to actually come down just a little bit. Oh, I should probably throw the hitch on there too. That way it's got some balance too. Whatever. And we'll mark it. Oh, uh, uh. I forgot to hit record, but there's the hook welded on. Uh, that is where I'll lift it, and hopefully it'll kind of kilt down a little bit so the pins hit first. And then when we lift it up, this top point will hit. All right, all I got left to do real quick is I'm gonna tack weld some angle iron up here, and then we'll call this thing done. Done with that thingy there on the floor. Uh, that wraps up all three parts I needed to build for this whole excursion. Next, let's go move the shipping container. We made it home last night. Everything went pretty good. So let's walk up here and talk about the hitch. Um, it fit on there really nice. I mean, the hitch is great. My only complaint on the hitch is I wish it was a little bit longer up here. Whatever length this coupler is, is what I wish the hitch was longer. Uh, when turning, these support braces I put in there come up into my brake lights a lot quicker than I would really like. But otherwise, that all worked out great. No problems there.